we just need to adjust right now. So with us anymore. Um, I hired a gentleman named Ned. Ned is used to running um, big operations and uh, he knows water features. He's going to let us know today when his, his start date is. We're also going to need a crew leader as well. Also, I'm going to have to jump out in the field with the guys, so um, it, it is what it is. Um, and I haven't been in this position in a few years where I had to jump out in the field, but um, I was out in the field for many, many years, so imparts some knowledge uh, to you guys. But in the meantime, we're slammed with a lot of different leads and sales calls and things like that. So, you know, it's good evolution, change is hard, and I like James a lot, like as a friend. And so I'm bummed he's not here just because I really like his energy. But we're going to be really picky with who we bring in. If, if someone's not a car, if they have a bad attitude, then they're just not welcome here. Dylan worked with Eric for a while, and I should have fired him quicker. The problem, the challenging thing was Eric was, he was so good for such a long time, and then he wasn't. And, um, and these guys, you know, were subject to a lot of anger, and, and we just don't want that in our business. To me, good working conditions and good culture are super important. Yeah, that's one of the reasons I'm sorry that James isn't here is because he just he brought a good energy. Um, but he's not, so um, so we're all very focused on making it easier for you guys and um, and better for you guys. And uh, you know that's why we brought in that because he's amazing at that. So. Yeah, he'll, he'll make it real easy for you guys, besides the hard work that put in. That's all I got for now. Didn't want to uh, talk about it in front of the guys, but, um, so, <laughs> so, yeah, total bummer that we, that we lost James. You know, I knew he was stressed out, and, you know, it was a tough situation. We definitely threw him into something that was uh, difficult for him, challenge, and it was a hard read because he would say, I got your back, you know, and I'm going to be here to uh, help you. You've always been helpful to me, this and that. And so on Friday, we show up. I'm upstairs, and I just get a text from him saying the door was locked and, and the keys are on the seat in the truck and so I go down there and his phone and keys and the publisher and all that stuff are there. So I take it he's quitting but the bummer is he always promised to give me a notice, like a month notice. And um, so we're left without a foreman. Um, which means I'm gonna have to jump back out there which I've spent a lot of years out in the field and um, you know, I don't mind doing it for a minute, but it's, it's not where my focus is. Um, I need to run a business, and there's a lot to do. Uh, so I never thought I'd be back out in the field. Um, it's just been an interesting turn of events, you know, sometimes in business. Two steps forward, one and a half steps back, but it's still progress. The bummer was uh, when Dylan came in, brought James up, and I said, well, I hope he's okay because I know it could really compromise certain things for him following through his promises. Um, you know, just like a lot of us, he's got checkered past and just don't want him falling back into old habits. And, and when we do things like break promises and not follow through on things, it you know, takes a hit to our esteem and that can often pull us back into a compromised area. So I voiced that to Dylan and I think Dylan forgot that the phone that the phone number that he had for James was a work phone. So <laughs> I get a text from Dylan this morning that says, it's just me and Dave and he's already talking shit about you. And I go, Dylan, I'm not talking about James, I care about James. You know, I've been his friend, like help him out a bunch and I just care about him. I hope he's gonna be okay. So it got pretty awkward because uh, you know 
Last thing we need is another person leaving right now. I think it all comes down to just a leader in the construction area. Like I've mentioned, we, we had a guy that was great for a while and then he was really took a toll on everyone that worked with him and no one wanted to work with him anymore and we're still recovering from that. So James leaving, total bummer because I liked the heck out of that guy. Everyone did, but maybe it's time to just press restart. Ned is cream of the cream. So he's really good and I'm excited. It's, it's definitely leveling up from anything we've had. It's tough, but that's just what business is, fixing problems. So that's what we're doing. So, yeah, it's supposed to be a, a, a pretty quick rebuild, but um, one, obviously we're without our foreman. The hard part is that we got a business with a lot of working parts on the sales guy too. And got a stack of bids to work on and um, sales appointments to go to, but I need to help these guys out. Also, the gardeners were supposed to clear out that vegetation and it uh, looks like we got stuck with it. So I'm gonna have to talk about homeowner. Doing something about that, um, it's construction. Well, looks like I'm just gonna have to jump in and start helping. and stuff like that. For instance, this is not meant to be a waterfall pump. This is a sump pump. And uh, it's probably not very efficient energy-wise. And, oh my gosh, this thing is nine amps. You only need a pump that may be three amps for this size uh, water feature. And so sometimes people think they're getting a good deal. Maybe they got this pump for, you know, $120 less than a proper pond pump that we use. The amount of electricity that they're spending on this pump is insane. Nine amps for this size, I mean, that's a lot of energy usage. So just all the little things add up. That's why it's important to have a certified aquascape contractor building your ponds because, well, I'm master certified at so many of these things. Um, and uh, it, it's, it's the experience and it's knowing the, the proper equipment to you. All our stuff is very tried and true. We're here in San Juan Capistrano. I guess the challenge is on this project where we lost our foreman without any notice. So I'm having to jump in in between uh, sales calls and bids. And so we we started taking this part. Um, they are supposed to have a gardener pull out all the bushes and all that stuff. So the guys are doing that. So it'll be running by Thursday. So there's a lot of work left to do on it, but it's a beautiful property and they're gonna redo all the hardscape around it. And the pond hasn't been running in a couple years, so I'm really excited to get this up and running again. I love resurrecting old ponds and making them beautiful again and making the homeowners really happy. Enjoy life this day with Aqua Life Ponds.